A little while ago, I made a video which talked about the strongest tornado to have happened within each U.S. state's lines. That video was obviously geared towards the U.S. audience, but I also got some requests to do the same video concept for other countries, with Canada getting the most votes. So today, that is exactly what we're going to do. While the United States is the undoubted tornado hotspot in the world, Canada is no slouch either and has seen its fair share of tornadoes as well. Canada, unlike the United States, is divided into provinces and territories rather than states. There are 10 different provinces and 3 separate territories. We're going to start with the provinces and territories that have recorded the weakest tornadoes and work our way up just like we did in the previous video. To begin, of the 13 provinces and territories, only one has never recorded a tornado, which is Nunavut. Tornadoes and thunderstorms need warm and humid air to form and sustain themselves, so it's really not much of a surprise that the region of Canada that's closest to the Arctic Circle has never had a tornado report. This doesn't necessarily mean that Nunavut has never actually had a tornado occur, but with how arid and remote the territory is, nobody has ever seen or reported one. To get to the first region that has actually recorded a tornado, we have to travel to the eastern shores of Canada, where we reach Prince Edward Island. Prince Edward Island has only recorded four tornadoes in its entire history, with all of them being rated as F-Zeros. The first on record occurred on August 15, 1980, just to the west of Charlottetown. This tornado remained on the ground for 4.6 kilometers, or 2.8 miles, which is the longest tract of the PEI bunch. The next one occurred just a month later on September 28, 1980, near Cape Traverse. The third occurred a couple of years later on September 10, 1982, just east of Summerside. Finally, the fourth and most recent on record occurred on August 19, 2007, in the town of Crapo. Next up and moving just to the south is Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia, similarly to Prince Edward Island, has only recorded a handful of tornadoes, with the strongest on record being an F1. Data is a bit spotty, but the first recorded F1 occurred on January 30th, 1954, near White Point. Just over a year later, on July 18th, 1955, another F1 was reported to have touched down, this time on the northern side of the province, near Tidnish. After this though, Nova Scotia wouldn't see another F1 tornado for another 66 years, when the drought finally ended on June 30th, 2021, as a tornado touched down in the town of Stewiak. The only other province or territory in Canada whose strongest tornado on record is an F or EF1 is Yukon. Yukon is one of the three northernmost territories in the country and has only recorded two tornadoes in its entire history. While the tornado count here is exceptionally low, the second and most recent one, which occurred on June 29, 2015, was rated as an EF1. This tornado occurred near Sambo Lake and was noted to have snapped numerous trees along its short path. To begin the F and EF2 category, we will start in the last of the three territories. Just like the other two territories, the Northwest Territories has only seen a handful of tornadoes in its history, but the first on record, and the strongest, was an F2. This one occurred on July 30th, 1978, just to the northwest of Yellowknife. This tornado was noted to have toppled a steel transmission tower and caused severe damage to weakly built houses in the area. Now that we are done with the Canadian territories, we can move southwest to our next province on the list, which is British Columbia. British Columbia is easily the most mountainous region of Canada, so it's really not much of a surprise that it also has not had that many recorded tornadoes in its history. While the tornadoes have been few and far between here, the province has recorded six separate F or EF2s in its history. The first occurred on July 5, 1990, near Soda Creek. This tornado caused impressive tree damage and was actually initially rated as an F3 before eventually being downgraded to the current rating. Just over a month later, on August 13th, another F2 touched down near Tachi. The following year, another one would touch down on July 2nd, 1991, near Klukals Lake. After a lull of over a decade, the fourth one would touch down on July 16th, 2003, near Quesnel. The two most recent ones actually occurred on the same day, which was August 11th, 2011. One of these touched down near Trutch Creek, and the other one was near Kanta. To round out the F and EF2 category, we once again have to travel across the country to the East Coast, where we arrive in Newfoundland and Labrador. Just like pretty much all of the provinces and territories that have been covered so far, Newfoundland and Labrador doesn't exactly receive that many tornadoes, but it has seen exactly one EF2 tornado in its history. This tornado occurred on September 3, 2018, near the town of Wabush. This tornado remained in rural portions of the area and was noted to have snapped and uprooted numerous trees. Moving up on the list to the F and EF3 category, and there is surprisingly only one entry, which is New Brunswick. 
New Brunswick has only had one tornado rated as an F3, and it occurred all the way back on August 3, 1879, in the town of Buktouche. This tornado injured 10 and claimed 5 lives, which makes it the 10th deadliest in Canadian history. Obviously though, this tornado, as well as some of the others that will be covered later, occurred a long time ago, so there are certainly some question marks about the authenticity of the information, but all that we can go off of is the information that's been provided. Moving up once again in categories to the F and EF4s, and we will start in Quebec. Quebec has actually only had one F4 tornado in its history, and it's a very similar case to what New Brunswick was. The only F4 rated tornado in Quebec history occurred back on August 16, 1888. Information about this tornado is scarce, but what is known is that it actually touched down in Ontario before crossing into Quebec. It also injured 16 and claimed 9 lives, which makes it the 5th deadliest in Canadian history. Moving westward to Ontario now, and we finally see a significant uptick in activity. Ontario has recorded significantly more tornadoes than any province or territory that's been covered so far, and has seen as many as 9 F4 tornadoes in its history. Just like some of the other instances on this list though, some of these Ontario F4s have questionable information that's been provided about their strength and as to where they even took place, so we'll just list all of the possibilities just in case. The first one, and like the last two provinces, occurred well over 100 years ago, this time on May 15, 1884 near Mapleton. The next one wouldn't occur for another 62 years on June 17, 1946. This twister actually touched down across the border in Detroit, Michigan, before crossing into Ontario. It also claimed 17 lives, which makes it the third deadliest tornado in Canadian history. Next up was another tornado which started in Michigan before crossing into Ontario, this time on May 21, 1953. This tornado injured 68 and claimed two lives as it barely made it across the border into Canada before dissipating. This path length is what's been confirmed, and is possibly just the bare minimum, as some records have this tornado actually remaining on the ground for over two and a half hours and over 130 kilometers, or 80 miles. This is unlikely though, as it seems probable that this was just more than one tornado produced from the same cyclic supercell along the same path. Three years later, on May 12, 1956, another F4 tornado touched down in Michigan before crossing the border into Ontario. This tornado also has controversy though, as some records don't even have this one ever crossing into Canada, and even the ones that do have it crossing in by the thinnest of margins, so it's certainly up for debate. The next incident wouldn't occur for over two decades, this time on August 7, 1979, when at least one F4 tornado and possibly even two touched down. Again, there is some controversy with this day as there were multiple tornadoes with questionable information about their F4 ratings. The first of these two touched down near Stratford, and tracked southeast for roughly 30 kilometers or 18 miles before roping out near Bright. The second tornado touched down from a separate supercell near Golsby and traveled for roughly 60 kilometers or 37 miles before roping out near Waterford. Sadly though, these two tornadoes combined to claim two lives and injure an additional 142. Four years later on May 2nd, 1983, another F4 touched down near Petrolia and tracked for 29 kilometers or 18 miles before roping out near Warwick. Finally, the two most recent F4s occurred on the same day, which was the deadly May 31st, 1985 tornado outbreak. The first of these two touched down near Arthur and tracked for 115 kilometers or 71 miles before dissipating near Mount Albert. This tornado injured 69 and claimed 4 lives, and is the longest confirmed tornado track in Ontario history. The second of the two touched down in Barrie before it tracked straight through the southern portion of the city. This tornado only remained on the ground for 15 kilometers or 9 miles, but it injured 155 and claimed 8 lives, which makes it the 7th deadliest in Canadian history. Continuing on our westward migration, and we arrive in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan is no stranger to tornadoes, but has only recorded three F4s, all of which were a long time ago. The first of the three occurred on June 30th, 1912 in Regina. This tornado, which is more commonly referred to as the Regina Cyclone, touched down 18 kilometers or 11 miles south of the city before traveling straight through downtown and going for another 12 kilometers or 7 miles after the city. The tornado was on the ground for a total of 30 kilometers or 18 miles, injured at least 300 people and claimed 28 lives, which is the deadliest tornado in Canadian history. The second F4 tornado occurred on July 1st, 1935 near Benson. This tornado was very strong, with some independent researchers even claiming it was of F5 intensity, but overall it did far less damage than the Regina tornado and only claimed one life. The third and most recent F4 occurred the following decade, more specifically on August 9, 1944. 
This twister touchdown near Camsack injured 44 and claimed 3 lives and is known locally as the Camsack Cyclone. We must move westward just one more time to round out the F and EF4 category, which we will conclude with Alberta. Alberta has also seen 3 F or EF4 rated tornadoes, including the most recent addition to any of the categories on this list. The first one, though, occurred on June 25, 1915 near Grassy Lake. This twister injured 12, claimed 5 lives, and was noted to have leveled multiple buildings and derailed a freight train. 62 years later, Alberta would see its next F4 when a violent tornado tore through the eastern side of Edmonton. This particular twister occurred on July 31, 1987, and it injured 253 people and claimed 27 lives, which is the second deadliest tornado in Canadian history. Notably, many of the fatalities from this tornado occurred towards the end of its life when it had just exited metropolitan Edmonton, but then sadly passed straight through the Evergreen Mobile Home Park before dissipating almost immediately afterwards. 15 of the 27 fatalities occurred in the Mobile Home Park alone. Finally, the third and most recent addition to the list occurred just a couple of years ago on July 1st, 2023. This tornado touched down to the south of Didsbury and meandered its way east-southeast for 15 kilometers or 9 miles before roping out. With that, we arrive at the F and EF5 category, and if you've been keeping track, there is only one province that hasn't been covered so far. The province in question is Manitoba, as it's the only one that has ever recorded an F or EF5 tornado in Canada. This specific tornado occurred on June 22, 2007 in Eli. The tornado formed just to the northwest of town and moved extremely slowly southeast. The twister presented itself as a harmless rope, but at its core had extremely violent winds. As it grew closer to town, it began moving even more erratically and started changing directions with little to no warning, and even performed complete 360 degree loops at times. For most of its life, it managed to dodge the town, and it looked like it was going to stay this way until it made another sudden change in direction. It had been going almost due south before it turned east and began heading for the homes on the extreme southwest side of town. The tornado eventually reached these homes and absolutely obliterated them before performing another loop and traveling back over the same houses again. It then slowly meandered in a southwest direction away from the town before dissipating shortly thereafter. Amazingly though, there were no injuries or fatalities as a result of this tornado. The damage to the homes in the southwest corner of Eli was immense and clearly warranted an F5 rating, but surveyors initially gave it a rating of F4. The surveyors gave this rating as they believed the majority of the damage was done as a result of the tornado's extreme slow forward speed and it sitting over the same houses for an extended period of time. However, that would all change months later when the surveyors would receive a video which showed the tornado destroying one of the houses in question. In the video, you can clearly see the tornado obliterate a house in just a matter of seconds, which proved that the damage was caused by F5 level winds and not just because of the slow forward speed of the twister. The formal upgrade to an F5 rating occurred on September 18, 2007, which now made this the first and only officially rated F or EF5 tornado in Canadian history. We have now covered all 13 provinces and territories in Canada, and this is what the data looks like from a zoomed out view. The final tally is one territory that has never recorded a tornado, one F or EF0, two F or EF1, three F or EF2, one F or EF3, four F or EF4, and finally one F or EF5. If you want to see this style of video done for another country or region in the world, let me know down in the comments and we'll see.